Ali Beasley. If you had to, I'll start off with this. If you had to guess right now, put a hundred, put a hundred dollars on it. Is he on the team next year first? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, because it's... because a hundred dollars isn't a ton of money. That's the only thing I'm gonna say there. As a little older, so I have a I have a good career and like I hundreds not right, a lot. Right. If you would have said a thousand, I would have said no. But I mean, I and and Dane and Britt talked about this. I mean, you, everyone's talked about this, but I I don't think if you don't get the pick, well, hell, let me think of my take on the fly. Pick or no <laughs> pick, I don't think you can run it back completely. Like I don't think we're Agreed. gonna see Malik 100%. and Ricky Rubio on opening night yeah. um and if we are it would just mean that the off season went so wacky for so many teams and the lottery went wacky that maybe they hold on to rubio for the trade deadline because at some point his contract is valuable as an expiring yes. um but I, I think malik his shooting as we're starting to see too in the nba these playoffs will be a huge even the wolves aren't in the playoffs i think these playoffs are so intriguing because it will be fun to watch and see if the team that wins it just doesn't give a shit about defense, right? Like they just pivot and like, I mean, if the Brooklyn Nets win it, that could revolutionize how people care about defense and how much we pay three and D guys, or we just go load up on offense. So it's a bummer. We didn't get to see Malik play five games with this new version of right. Ant and stuff. But um, yeah, I mean, the biggest takeaway from media day on Monday was Malik telling reporters that he would be okay coming off the bench as a six man if if it if they were winning if they're winning right which, everything which, comes down to them winning which is eerily similar to what Ricky said before the season yes. when he's like I'll come off the bench if we're winning um but I just it'll be it'll be interesting I guess I kind of want your opinion on it but I think yeah. Malik is designed as a skill set to be a six man contender but I don't know if Malik Beasley internally mentally as I point at my brain is wired for that because I think Malik Beasley takes the practice court and thinks he's the best player on the team. Yep. And yep. that's, I don't think Jordan Clarkson does that for the jazz. I don't think Jordan Clarkson thinks he's the best player, but he knows he knows he has, his role. Yeah. So you mean, do you think he can work as a six man? Oh God. All right. So I'll say if he, I don't think Rosas and Finch will do this, but if he's starting with D towns and they're not going to win a lot, they're going to score 150 and give up 200. But yeah, if you get put him at six roll and he likes it, or just plays a few games and the team wins and he's productive, it then I I like it. I think he likes it. I really don't know. We only saw what was it? I think I have it right here uh, for Beasley. Thirty seven games of him and so few with Finch. It's just yeah, man, yeah good like point. it's hard to gauge what the team thinks of him. Like we didn't get to see him at all, and I. I personally would bet that he's gone to start the next season. I think Rosas likes him a lot, but they've got their three offensive guys and you've mentioned it. I just don't think it works with Beasley unless he's coming off the bench, but does that work? I just don't know. Maybe, but he doesn't play any defense and, and he's I think, a good shooter, but you can get a cheap, good shooter with no defense for less than 17 mil a year. And I think we, we clearly do like we, we clearly overrate starting lineups. It's kind of yeah, like you know, what I mean? it's 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 a I, it's yeah. a joke, but no, I'm actually I'm, meant, I'm actually okay, going to sure, build sure. off your point because I think you make a good point that I mean sometimes we see like weird teams start a weird like Alex Len at center for five <laughs> minutes to go bang some guys and then he never plays again. <laughs> but I think you make a good point that if Malik doesn't do the six man role and he starts, I I'm actually emphasizing that starting lineup kind of does matter because then it's like so what is it? Is it Russell Beasley and then you shift Ant down to the three? And then right. are you pushing Jaden to the four when I think everyone externally as in us and internally led by Chris Finch thinks Jaden's a three. Yeah. he so, just now said you, it too. so now are you getting smaller? It's just, to me, it's like, I think Malik Beasley can have a role on this team, but I think Anthony Edwards, like when you Sharpie in your, your depth chart next year, like he has to be the shooting guard. And I know positions don't matter as much, but, we know he is a shooting guard and we know Carl's the center and we know Delo's the, the, the point guard. It's like, I think that three and four spot, they need to be defensive minded, low usage guys. Like, I, you know, like if Jordan Clarkson started for the jazz and you bumped everyone down a peg, then you like are eliminating like what Royce O'Neal from the starting lineup. Like you're just, yeah. Solid you're just defender, right? Cannibalizing your, your lineup. And that's why it's not so much about 
it's not so much about like starting versus not. It's just like his role of you who can't will he have... play with the most. Like that's what it's more about. Yes, yes. But and couldn't I mean? Can he synergize with a Nas Reed who exactly. can do, do a lot of other stuff, stretch the floor? Um, I'm sure if Malik and Nas had a couple weeks, you know, work on stuff like they might be a good pick and roll partner. Or um, if you get, let's say in this one hypothetical, we've kept Malik and we've shipped out Ricky and you get some weird young athletic backup point guard in that can like set the table for guys. Maybe it's Jordan McLaughlin, maybe it's not, but um, yeah, like you said, just can force feed Malik shots and still get him seven threes a game. Um, But in that second unit and then, and then maybe he does mean Jordan Clarkson, not to beat this to death, but like he sure. closes um, Lou Williams as a six man, he, he would close for them a lot and give them an option um, when you kind of go offense to defense. So I don't think if Malik Beasley starts, let's just put it that way next year, I will like, I don't know, print off this podcast and eat it. Like I'll be so <laughs> shocked if that happens, but if he embraces the yeah. six man role, that'd be great. But also too, if you just said to me, which you're right, that they have their core, their big three or whatever, you have to start to have money to trade for other money. Yeah. And that's where it's literally, it's only Malik or it's only Ricky. Um, and which one of those guys has more view in other, in other front offices. And I, th- I think it's Malik because he's younger. He hits on a skill that's more necessary in today's game. And um, he might be a wild card, literally like he might be a wild person, but <laughs> he's also signed for a couple more years. And that, that teams like that sometimes when you have more player control right. than an expiring. So, he just he just seems like such an outlier though. Does that I mean he's just the no defense in the shooting. We've got that. And you're just you're good at it, but we've got the star power already and you're making 16, 17 mil a year coming up and it's just we can't keep it. We need to get a defensive power forward in eventually, right? Like that just seems obvious. I got to make that move soon and And I just how do I you think do that like with you said if here? I think not to just completely like I like Malik. I do, but but I, I also it think too, like make sense. Malik's shooting looked really helpful when Carl was out and Ant couldn't hit the side of a barn. Yeah. But when Anthony <laughs> when Edwards he was now, the only one, yeah, Anthony Edwards has become this weird generic brand Steph Curry on these step back <laughs> threes and stuff. Like if he's shooting more, and we know Russell's a great shooter, and Carl's one of the best shooters of his yeah. generation. Um, I'm you're right. I'm not, I'm literally just spewing a bunch of randomness, but you're right that like how much extra shooting do you need? (laughs) Or can you get a guy who might not shoot at Malik's clip? Maybe he's a few percentage points down, but like on the, on the NBA live or NBA 2k, you know, like the player charts of like all your little bars, maybe he's not a nine out of 10 shooting threes. He's a six, but he's also a seven out of 10 defensively rather than a two. Um, And he comes at a quarter of the price. Because you can't, I mean, I, I that's why I go back to the six man role. I don't know if you can pay a guy that much money to be your six man. Um, yeah, it's just also, crazy. He was signed before we even knew anything about Ant, right? Yeah, and yeah, I, I would. So, yeah. I know Dane Moore said some things that he maybe pushes against the value of that contract. I still believe that there will be teams lining up if they know yeah. l- legally Malik. That is, is a big part of it. <laughs> clean and again, too. That's almost another reason why I would be actively trying to move him is because he did already mess up once. And that was like, I'd have to, I can look, but like that was either right before or right after he signed that contract. And it's just like, you know, when you're getting that much money, life changing amount of money, you would think that you'd be able to hide and lay low. And he wasn't doing that. I mean, he went straight to Miami to sign his contract and celebrate. So if you're a team like Minnesota and you're already cash strapped and you're a small market, you might be smart to get, this is always a football thing, right? Like the Bill Belichick of get rid of a guy a year too early rather than a year too late. Right. It might be smart for them to get rid of Malik a year too early than a year too late. Cause if it's a year too late, you're screwed. But yes. if it's a year too early, maybe you can get 90 cents for a guy that you didn't pay that much money asset wise to acquire. So that the, the Malik Beasley storyline to me is like maybe not number one, but it's like the number two story to monitor absolutely in the off season yeah my dog just popped my door open to say hi but, <laughs> <What's up? laughs> but yeah that kind of we've talked about ricky a bit but we'll just go right into ricky now who is really in a very similar boat to malik expiring contract now will be valuable if not this off season then at the trade deadline it's very hard to see him finishing this contract with the wolves it's possible for sure 
what do you think the chances are of both him and Malik starting this upcoming season with the Wolves? Like 20, 25, pretty low, right? <sighs> just because they got to make some moves here. You can't run I'm, it back. I'm not like ignoring you. I'm just on my phone looking at spot track, looking at contracts. So <laughs> Ricky Rubio will be 30 next yeah. season. Last year of his contract, making $17.8 million. Um, it's hard to dump that. In my childhood home back in North Dakota, I have a bunch of Ricky Rubio signed memorabilia all over the walls. I'm a big Rubio guy. Yeah, he did, same. He, he did for me kind of last quote generation what Ant did for me now. Like he saved my fandom when it was really low. Um, and I think the r- leadership role he played behind the scenes was even bigger than it's been publicly announced. And we all think it was pretty big. Like we know Ant – Absolutely loves that guy, but at seventeen point eight million dollars, like something has to give. Um, if it was five, I think he would be a great contract. Yes, steal as the first point guard off the bench. Like if if he was just the Jordan McLaughlin role at you know three to five million, it it would be like a we we need him to retire. Yeah, like here with his team, but at seventeen point eight, I. I don't think he'll be here. And I think too, like it'll come into if Balmero does come over, which I think all signs point to that happening. Yeah. Um, let's just put everything else aside for a sec. If Balmero is over here, there's like a 0% chance that Beasley and Ricky can be here. Cause there's literally yes. not no money for it. enough. Sp- not even the, yes, the money, but also too, like oh, yeah. where do you find up with the minutes? Like you'd have to hope for a quadruple overtime every night just to get those guys their <laughs> average amount of minutes. So I, I think he maybe sees the writing on the wall. He um I'm sure he yeah. I'm He's sure been he, through this enough. Yeah, and I, I think God again, not to just completely credit these guys, because I love ripping on Dane every now and then, but I think him or Britt had a really good take of like the team that drafts Jalen Suggs. Maybe they would want a Ricky Rubio because Ricky Rubio has shown now like, his resume is like he is a consultant on player yes. development, whether it be Devin Booker, Donovan Mitchell, and now Anthony Edwards, he is a like slashing guard whisperer on how to grow up in this league and like learn about the game of basketball. So I think he still has a ton of value to some team, but I don't know if it's this one. And I, I think without rambling, I don't think he's here. And to build on that, there's no way him and Malik are here next year. There's just, okay. there can't be so. Do you agree or is that I I do spicy? And no, I don't think that's a hot take. More not because they're bad players, they don't fit, because they've got to change things. And in order to change things, or in order to bring anyone new in, one of them almost has to be gone. Like you mentioned it, just to get Bolmero here he, for the money and for the playing time, they can't both be here. And I don't think Bolmero is going to be their only addition. So yeah, I'm with you. Like Rubio. The mentorship, him and Ant love each other. But if you trade Rubio, I don't think Ant's going to go back to his first half self. Like, and it and it sucks. It that. sucks as Rubio as your dog just walked in. Like, it sucks yeah. as Rubio is like the trained, well-behaved older dog, right? <laughs> yeah. Whereas Balmero is like the puppy. But at you know, he's going to cost right. a fraction of the price. He's going to be younger. He's going to be more athletic. I mean, you're what? I'm I'm such a sick human. I've watched all these clips multiple times, but like, he's really physical and he's yeah. quick and he can defend and his jumper isn't any worse than Ricky's. It looks like it's improving throughout the season. That was Barcelona. like the one kind of thing he had to work on, right? Jumper. Right. Right. But if you thought Ricky, and I, I don't know if you said his stats yet, but if you, if, if you thought Ricky had a down year and is kind of on the decline, um, then I, then you just bring in the other guy who's younger and costs one fifth of the salary um, to do the same things that Ricky does, who might have a, might have a much lower floor. I love kind of those types of things. Like Balmero will have a much lower floor his rookie year than Rook, than Ricky Rubio does, but he might also have a higher ceiling because he's younger yeah. and more athletic. So uh, I think we know Ricky's ceiling. Like it's not yeah. that great. He's I here think, for the mentorship. He's not here to play. I mean, he is, but like, I think the, you and I yeah. will do one of these before the start of next season or definitely yes. once next season starts. And uh, I'm, pretty comfortable saying that i think we probably saw you were at game 72 mavs yeah 71 72 you probably witnessed firsthand ricky rubio's last game that's i was thinking myself like he came in for the last time and i was like dang 
this is yeah. gonna be it huh that's like, that's emotional for me. <laughs> once again yeah once again once because i'm because I, I when i play basketball i was a terrible shooter that could only pass so i was like this is my guy <laughs> ricky rubio that's why I relate to him because I, I do yeah. play the same way. So like I love to pass exactly. and set guys up. I like to defend right. and yes. I'm not my jumper. I mean, I can shoot, but I'm not like. I, I love almost, those things because I couldn't shoot. <laughs> I, I'll play pickup games for a couple yeah. hours at uh, LA Fitness and I haven't got a shot off. But right. I love to exactly. just defend and set guys up and shit. So Ricky Rubio influenced me as like a basketball fan. But again, sometimes it is. And he knows it and I feel for him. But he says it all the time. It's a business. And yeah. part of this business is budgets and it's 17.8 million. Yeah. I mean, he, I just, he's got to have known signing that contract that this is just yeah. what it comes with. Yeah. 